two sisters were destined to die. Julia, the first sister, and Martha, the second. On Julia's day of departing, identical twins stood before me, impossible to tell apart. They questioned my presence, since they were still so young. Julia must come with me, I demanded. But they both claimed to be Martha. I explained that Martha's fate was soon to be the same, and their games were useless. I didn't have time for it. The war was keeping me busy. But they didn't concede, and instead kept insisting. Can we follow you together? No, impossible. Are you sure Martha will die too? Nothing is certain in wartime. What if the wrong person went with you? Then you would have cheated death. One would die unjustly, and the other would simply be delaying her fate. They discussed amongst themselves, then hugged before one of them came forward. She stared in a determined, almost threatening manner. I guessed it was Martha sacrificing herself, giving more time to her sister. But I stayed silent, not to reveal their failed deception. No one lies to the face of their own death. So I asked how their choice was reached. We do lots by throwing a medallion, she said quietly. They had trusted in fate. Oh, how naive they were. They knew fate plays by its own rules, which is true, but it is also my ally. Fate never would have allowed the wrong girl to follow me. In that case, my work was done. She must have been Julia. However, little to my knowledge at the time, that blasted medallion had the same name engraved on both sides. Martha's. So, my first assumption was correct. They were too damned smart, and had fooled both fate and me. One thing is for sure. I'll put things back where they belong. I will correct my ignorance and give fate back its blindfold. so bad. I can hardly breathe. No, 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 my bag is not here. My diary. Lapo's letter. How is she? How is my daughter? Please, doctor. Please give me good news. It's a miracle she's alive, Eric, but she will be all right. The bullet passed right by her heart and exited her chest. Unbelievably, it missed her lungs, spine, and heart. She could have been paralyzed or died. But thankfully, she's fine. I examined her thoroughly. She didn't even lose that much blood. She was lucky. And you were lucky. 
so to speak. She was lucky that my wife went for a walk in the woods. Otherwise... Otherwise she would have bled to death, yes. I don't know what to say. All of this. It's too much. So much death and suffering. Nothing more. Don't worry, Erik. She's young, so she'll recover quickly. I'll be here all day anyway. Thank you, Doctor, for everything. Do you mind coming with me to pick my wife up from the cemetery? The funeral will start soon in the chapel. Of course not. Lead the way. You know, with all of these preparations for the funeral, Irina wants everything to be perfect. It's her way of coping, so she doesn't have to think about everything going on. She is a woman who has suffered so much. Maybe too much. I would like to spend a moment with my sister, just me and her alone, before people arrive for the funeral and then take her away. Violence against citizens continues in La Romola. What if the bag is here Once somewhere? Again, General Kay's family has come under fire. Now it is the life of her sister, Martha, that is in danger. General Edith K. New rules on curfew and women's behavior. German command of S. Vincenzo Atori. Telephone number 1185. After the Battle of Porti Ponzi, on the 18th, they are still far from the Tavernelli Val di Tisa. The German resistance on the Tuscan hills has been exhausting. There are more and more weapons around, and everyone is scared after what happened. There's my bag. Thank God. Let's hope Lapo's letter is in there. Dear Julia, are you surprised that I've addressed this to you and don't think you're dead? Everyone calls you Martha now, right? I know you too well. I can never understand why no one else can ever tell you apart. Not even your own mother and father. Martha is gone, and I cannot reconcile myself to that fact. I have to stay hidden, and sadly I can't run to you. Even if I would love nothing more than to hold you tight and cry together. No words. I just want to be close to you. Can we meet in the barn tonight? I will try my best to be there around midnight. Don't be alarmed, but if things get ugly, please remember this number, 6934. He knew he was in serious danger, but what about the letter? I had it in my hand when the soldiers ran off. Mummy found me, and if she's read it, well, she hates Lapo, and now she must know who I am. No, no, she probably would have left me there to die. She'd rather have no daughter than the wrong one. Before I passed out, I must have put it back in my bag. There is no other explanation.
There is darkness that brings uncertainty, but there will be a guide. Something that can teach me something. July 19th. I retrieved the cameras at the lake, but I had convinced myself that I was the one who had hurt Martha. So much so that when I had the rolls with me on the way home, I found myself in another horrible dream. I don't even remember going to sleep. As soon as I woke up, I developed the film. The photos confirmed to me that my memory of that night was correct. It was a great relief. I have decided to go back to the lake in an attempt to communicate with the white lady. I know it's a crazy thought, but I can't get it out of my head. I need to know what happened to Martha, so I must pursue every possible avenue, even the path of insanity. When it's not too sunny outside, the 200 ISO film works well. The radio needs to be kept on at all times these days. It can save your life knowing things on time, especially before they happen. Attempted murder in La Romola. After the murder of Julia Kay, today her twin sister is the victim of another attempted murder. The condition of the young girl, found by the German troops, is no cause for concern. The political motive behind this is becoming all the more clear. But that's not what happened. It's all wrong. Mummy was the one who found me. The German soldiers shot me. Best to stay quiet. No one ever believes the truth. I should pick up the phone but remain silent. If I let the caller speak first, I'll find out who it is. Hello? Ma'am? Can you hear me? Is there somebody there? Mr. Eric? Oh, it's the nanny. I can confide in her. Nanny? Hello? It's me. What? Hello? Oh, my lord. I must be dreaming or something. No, Nanny. You're not dreaming. It's really me. It's Julia. Oh, my god. Julia. My little sparrow. How wonderful. Sorry, but... I thought you were dead. I... I saw you lying there dead. This brings me so much joy that... Actually, you must explain to me, my little sparrow. What is happening? I told Nanny everything that had happened. She was sad for Martha, of course, but very happy at the same time. I was the one she had a special bond with. I explained to her that I wanted to try and meet the White Lady, even if I knew it was a silly idea. But she didn't think I was a fool. Quite the opposite. She explained to me what I should do in an attempt to meet her. It was complicated. I noted everything down carefully in my diary. Who knows, maybe she did it only to keep me occupied, while deciding what to do with me and who to warn. I won't ever know, though, because that very same day, a bomb struck the villa and she died. They all died. We should have been in that house ourselves, but instead, poor Nanny. Bye, Nanny. I love you. Goodbye, my darling. I thought I'd lost you. Be careful, my little sparrow.
Martha was taken to the chapel for her funeral. I want to say goodbye to her alone before everyone arrives. Poor little one, he's dead, poor little guy. His place is by Martha's side. Nanny always calls me Little Sparrow. This is the part of me that died with Martha. It'll be safe next to her. Here, Martha, this is my heart. Carry it with you. I'm starting to understand how painful your condition must have been. Not being able to properly communicate with anyone is becoming increasingly difficult. I envied you, but I did not see your suffering. I did not understand your courage. I miss you so much, Martha. I am not worthy to dress in your clothes. Commune of San Casciano, Province of Florence, Death Certificate. From the Register of Death Certificates of this Commune, number 174, part 3, series 12 of the year 1944. It is certified that on the day of the 16th of July of the year 1944, Julia Kay has died, resident of Via Perciabaya, born in La Romola. On the 26th of February 1923, the daughter of General Erich K. and Irene K. Don Attilio D. will give the funeral and the esteemed Mr. Alberto M., who will look after the burial in the cemetery of La Romola, telephone number 6537. The official state civil service, General Galeazzo T.
Now I know what must be done to meet the lady. Nanny has explained everything to me. I must try to meet her early in the morning when it is foggy, or all will have been in vain. That's what the legend says. This is what I need to do. 1. I must reinvoke her loss by putting her into contact with her lover. To do this, Nanny said to look for his grave in the woods, but there are so many. Daddy always said that infrared photos can see what the naked eye cannot. Maybe then they also see ghosts. There wouldn't be anything strange about that now, considering I'm trying to contact one after all. How crazy. 2. A part of me needs to enter her world. A lock of hair would work, so I'll need scissors to cut some off. 3. I will need an object that connects her world to mine. I don't know what to do for this yet. Hopefully something will come to mind when I least expect it. 4. To communicate with her, I will need to use my tarot cards. I will meet with the lady on the island where her lover was executed. That raven is making a big fuss. Maybe it's the same raven that killed that poor sparrow. I hate bullying, yet it seemed as if the raven wanted to bring the little bird back to life. I should try again. Maybe only so it can kill it again. Hello, it's at NAK. Yeah? Yeah, and wh what do you want from me? I'm sorry to disturb you. I just wanted to know if I can come over to see you later today or tomorrow. Of course not. Do not come looking for me anymore. Stop bothering me, you bitch. He must be going crazy. I don't believe for one second that Mummy would let him treat her this way. Sheer madness. Headquarters for the officers of San Casciano. How can I help? Hi, I was hoping to hear whether there has been any development on the investigation into the murder of Julia Kay. Wait a moment, please. Who's calling? I am a Renee Kay, Julia Kay's mother. Mrs. Kay, forgive me. I didn't recognise your voice. Unfortunately, I don't have any real news. We are following up on some suspects. We assume we're with the boy who was killed in the woods outside your house. They seem to be planning something else. But your husband is probably the best person to ask about that. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, madam.
I have no reason to call Daddy's command. dress. It's made from the same fabric I found a shred of next to the lake. In fact, it is torn. It must be my mother's. My goodness. I started to suspect that Mummy could have been involved in Martha's murder. Lost in these thoughts, hours passed, and I completely forgot about the funeral. When I realized it was evening, they were already carrying the coffin towards the cemetery. She never loved me, I knew that well. But I would never have believed that, had it been her. I struggled to believe it, but it made so much sense. At the lake, she must have thought Martha was me because she was convinced that I was dead. When the funeral ended, I felt an irresistible urge to play. I loved music. I started playing without thinking about the possible consequences. I didn't care anymore. I needed to feel alive, to exist again. On here, Julia? Is that you? No, it's not possible. Martha's never played. She's deaf, yet no. This is madness. My God. So, Martha? I understand now. You can get all of the attention, right? You were jealous, weren't you? Because she was a wonderful girl and, and you're just a useless little slut. How did you manage to convince her? I get it now. But she... she talked to me. I... I... no. It doesn't make sense. I will have you locked up in an asylum. You hear? That's enough! You will pay for what you've done, you cursed lunatic! They will torture you to reveal the monsters in your head. Her words were as sharp as blades. 
I tried to tell her that it wasn't me. I showed her the photos I developed that proved my innocence. But she grew all the more angry, calling me crazy, and then she began to hit me with everything she had at hand. I closed my eyes as more darkness began to take over in me. Memories came flooding back. Not memories of actual past events, but more so of feelings. Feelings I had when I was little. They were scary. They were the fears of a little girl. Despite what had happened, I went walking in the woods early the next morning to meet the lady. The evening before, my father had tried desperately to console me. Talk to me, Julia. You know I love you. I just want to understand what happened. I am happy you are alive. Even if we have lost mother, your mother was just in shock. She didn't want to hurt you. I don't know what I'm hoping to find, but what else can I do? I will hopefully see if one of these graves is hiding something. I hope that the infrared film will show me.
my dress. It could be the element that links my world with that of the lady. It has been here for a few days, in a place that is both mine and hers. Without all the necessary elements, there's no point travelling to the island. The yellow filter. If it were to snow, it would be perfect. The green filter. Useful for landscapes. There's the grave I've been searching for, in the spirit of a prisoner. Just like the White Lady, he's trapped in this world, but they can no longer meet one another. Evil is separating them.
If I wear this, it should allow me to make contact with her. With this object, she'll have to hear me, I have no doubt. Now that I have everything I need to communicate with the lady, I can finally go to the island. take me fishing in it many years ago. I don't understand why Mother never wanted me and Martha to use it. This is the tree the lover was hung from, according to the legend.
roll of film. It's the one that I was taking out of the camera just before I discovered Martha's body. It should contain shots from before that moment. With a bit of luck, one of the shots has captured the moment of Martha's murder. I will then finally have an answer. Was it really Mummy? I will develop it as soon as I can, but now it's time to speak with the White Lady. I will wear her lover's cross to draw her to me. A lock of my hair to enter into her world. I will use the tarot cards to communicate with her. The first ten will be used like I did with Nanny. Once two cards have been chosen, it should begin. You camouflage yourself in the woods to approach me. You blend in with the water to make yourself known. You wish to communicate with me through the energy of symbols. You use my pain to summon me. You are very bold. You call upon me for knowledge that I do not possess. For answers I do not have, I am only a vessel, like water, like air, a vessel to move and breathe. It worked. Now I need to choose two cards. Here we go. Part of our soul embraces the people we love. It is then torn away from us when these people disappear. The wound is deep and it cannot heal. Faith vacillates. Death causes fear. But the church is a safe place. It is home and mother to its children. Faith is the light. Do not lose it. Finding it again is almost impossible. I lost it in sorrow, and without time, I am lost in the dark. You do not have control of yourself. There is a dark figure inside you. The wounds are feeding it. It will do things you do not like. It will use your desires, your guilt, the darkest parts of your conscience. The daughter, the house, the mother. The daughter comes from the mother's house, then makes herself a home and becomes a mother. This cycle is broken. To undo the knot, find the son. He is the original sin reflected on you. The one who gave you the light wishes to take it back. She wants control. 
Bit by bit, she is crumbling your life. You have to stop her. You will no longer be able to tell light from darkness. In sorrow, the difference is so subtle. You are alone, and you will remain alone. Memories are abandoning you. They are your only true companions. Now they take the place of your happy childhood and they may return to keep you company. I can sense that you want to know who did it, but I do not have the answer. You must find it yourself. Do not ever try to enter through the front door, if you wish to reach the heart. Your twin sister might have the answer you are looking for. Even after death, we leave traces of ourselves, don't we? Everything is indefinite if you look at the essence of things. Speaking with the White Lady confused me even more, but at least now I have this key.
July 16th. Dear sister, I entrust my secrets to this letter. If you are reading it, things have gone as I thought they might, and I am no longer there with you. First of all, I am not deaf, and I never was. Mother scared me when we were little, so I decided not to speak or listen anymore. It worked. In fact, Mother began to love me. They also found a scientific explanation for my deafness. Neurological damage caused by excessive pressure exerted by the twin during pregnancy progressively led to hearing loss. And like that, my decision was also transformed into a fault of yours. So I must put it right. Do I have any other secrets? Unfortunately, yes, but a letter is too cold for such matters. Now that you know that I can speak, please go to the dark room. I have a hidden recording. Listen to it and you will hear my voice. Farewell, Martha. Why all of this madness, Martha? What else have you been hiding from me? You deprived me of your voice for more than fifteen years. I can't wait to hear it now. There is nothing here. Hi, Julia. I know that this will seem absurd, but this is me and this is my voice. We are equals in this sense, too. Well, it's obvious, really. I've basically always spoken, and you were my voice. I'm going to meet my fate, so I don't want there to be any more secrets between us. I have to tell you that I'm... I'm pregnant, Julia. I'm pregnant with Lapo's baby. We had sex, and I never had the courage to tell you. I was so afraid of hurting you. I'm so ashamed. And now, how can I ever bring this child into the world? The baby is starting to show. Could you tell? That's why I'm no longer getting undressed in front of you. But for how much longer can I hide it? Yesterday, you asked me to go to the lake together early in the morning. You, the sleepyhead, early. I asked you to switch beds with me, like we used to when we were little girls. I got up at dawn and didn't wake you. I put on one of your dresses. I wrote a card to Mother telling her that it was you who was pregnant, not me, and to come and see at the lake. I left it on the desk in her room. Then I felt the need to talk to you, and I remembered the recorder in the dark room. to the lake alone and act as you. I will tell her everything you never had the courage to tell her. I will be your voice. I know how much she's made you suffer over the years. Unlike you, I remember all of the harm she has done to you and it is my fault. Take my place, sister. You will live a better life and I will be able to rest in peace knowing that I at least try to put right what I have done wrong. I will go now. My last memory will be the image of you sleeping peacefully.
Hi, Julia. I was upset, unbelievably upset. July 16th, that cursed day. Martha didn't wake me up. Martha wasn't there and we were supposed to go to the lake together. She even made her bed, which was unusual. I thought Mother woke up early, despite her medication, and asked her to do something. There was a dress missing from my wardrobe. It was late. Martha hadn't woken me up as we had agreed, and I always overslept. I simply decided to go out and take the photographs by myself without Martha. It was a foggy morning, but it was no longer dawn. It was a sign of something terrible. My mother had killed her beloved Martha with her own hands. I had then taken her place, usurping the throne of her affection. She would have never forgiven me. I had real reason to be afraid. I searched for one of Daddy's pistols to defend myself. What a stupid little girl I was. In spite of everything, that roll of film still needed developing. Even if it didn't prove she was guilty. I also wanted to search for proof of Martha's pregnancy. Twenty-first of July. Lapo is dead. They shot me in the back when I discovered his body. I thought I had hit rock bottom. These are soulless, empty days. After so many awful events, I finally managed to meet the White Lady. Or so I believe. The line between reality and dreams is becoming less and less clear to me. I thought a lot about her words, but they didn't shed any light on my assumptions. They kept ringing in my mind. Maybe I will understand when the time comes. Now I know for certain that it was Mummy who killed Martha, when she thought that she was me. Only a week ago, all of this would have seemed impossible. I just need to find the proof, so she can pay for what she has done. ISO film. It comes into its own shooting clouds and indoors. Units have reinforced their positions that run from San Michel to La Romola. Near La Romola. General Edith K. New rules on curfew and where General K was staying was bombed by the artillery. 
Luckily, the general and his family were not in the house at the time of the attack. And once again, La Romola has been the site of graphic barbarity. A farm was stormed and animals were stolen and killed. Nobody has claimed responsibility for yet another act of senseless vandalism. But at the scene, an anti-German propaganda I flyer mustn't was care about what people this think. This is the civilization that our comrades are proposing. All fear will prevent me from facing the music. It will be very difficult to recover from the mental collapse. Destiny is inevitable. The end waits for us. Telegram. I'll leave it in the letterbox. Have a good day. Another telegram of condolence. Isn't it a bit late? The New Zealanders conquer Tavernelli in the eastern sector of the battlefront. The troops of the 2nd New Zealand Division, British 8th Corps, conquer Tavernelli. The 6th South African Armoured Division advances on the heights near Greve conquering the peaks of the Domini and Philly Mountains. The 4th Division reaches San Giovanni. Dear Mrs. Irene K, Following your call, we have received a telegram from Dr. D. Your request has been accepted. As soon as the police station issues authorization, we will send for the girl. While we wait, to avoid the girl taking any extreme actions, as per the fears you have expressed, we ask that you trust in the advice of her treating physician. I thank you for your generous and charitable donation to our institution. Director S. Volterra Psychiatric Hospital. Telephone 0782. Now that she has discovered everything, she wants to lock me up in an asylum. Or maybe even worse, she wants to kill me and have everyone believe it was suicide. She is preparing all the finer details. Go to the dark room now. Not when she's around. I must stay as far away from her as possible. I could go to the cemetery instead to find out whether Martha really was pregnant or not. The fence has been destroyed. Could it have been wolves?
Nazi fascists at the stake. What? Who could have done this? What did these poor creatures have to do with anything? Martha is in the family crypt. That place is scary. I don't remember, but Nanny told me we used to go there when we were kids to see who was brave enough to go down the stairs. No one would ever go further than the first two steps. Now Martha's down there, alone, in the dark. She must be frightened. crypt is here. Not now. Let's hope the caretaker isn't around. That man gives me the creeps. This door is locked, but I must get in. Maybe I can find something around here to break the lock. These are perfect for breaking the lock. I should hurry before the caretaker comes back.
family crypt is locked. The key must be in the caretaker's hut, as always. Enough. I can't go on like this any longer. I can't go on pretending nothing happened. My family was slaughtered by these dirty Nazis. My daughter wasn't even buried and I had to bury that half-blood instead. An Italian family that got cosy with the dirty Germans. Bastards, that's what they are. What am I supposed to do with my life now? I want to end it, but not without taking a few Germans down with me. You won't see me anymore. But you will hear about me. Long live the resistance. Viva Italia. Everyone takes a side. I find myself siding with my family, but I'm not sure whether it is right. Instructions for the automatic telephone machine. For example, if you wish to call the number 0573, pick up the telephone from the hook and bring the receiver to your ear. You will hear a continuous tone. Firstly, place your index finger in the hole displaying the number zero. Turn the disc clockwise until it stops. Let the disc return freely to its resting position. Repeat the same steps for the numbers 573. I can see why we were scared as children. It's a rather gloomy place. May God forgive me for what I'm about to do. I also pray that you, Martha, will forgive me.
Martha was pregnant, pregnant with a deformed fetus with two heads, twins again. They always said that it ran in the family. I was all the more shocked. I was doing things that I had never done before. I do not know what force was moving me. I became unstoppable. I decided to photograph the horror as evidence to show my mother and to everyone. Who knows why? Enough now. I will torture you no longer. I will come back to fix you, and I will stay and take care of you. We will spend so much time together. I love you, Martha. Doctor, I must thank you for your help. I wouldn't know what to do without you. Even our own dear Don Atilio seems to not understand the situation. Irena, please, consider the idea of leaving Italy as your husband suggested. It would be better for everyone, especially for the girl. I fear that nothing will make her better. Her father doesn't want to accept it. I believe that hope is long gone. I agree, but in Germany there are better treatments in specialized clinics. The asylum is a temporary solution, just to ensure that she doesn't do anything foolish. But it's a nightmarish place. You know that all too well. You cannot possibly want this for your daughter. Of course I don't. But what can I do? She is a danger to herself, to us, to everyone. One of Eric's guns has also disappeared. She must have taken it. Who else could it have been? I am so scared, Doctor. I cannot wait any longer. Also, you know what they think of Italians in Germany, don't you? But you would be with Eric, an esteemed general. Everyone will respect you. That cursed girl. Where could she be? Let's hope she doesn't play any more foolish stunts. I'll wait for her here, in the cellar. Sooner or later, she'll go to the dark room. That's for sure. I would gladly stay and keep an eye on her. But I must rush to town to organize the last few things for her hospitalization. Thank you, Doctor. Don't worry. We'll see you later. She's sleeping. I must take advantage of this. I will make her talk. She will reveal the truth out of fear. She thinks I can be silenced by calling me crazy. But unbeknownst to her, I will record everything. Everyone will know what you have done to your own daughter. I would make too much noise and wake her up.
make too much noise and wake her up. Now I will wake her up and she will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. <laughs> Dear God, what have I done? She forced me. She killed Martha. But who in the world will believe me now? They will take me to the mental asylum. Those rolls of film are my only hope. So that's who had the keys to my childhood bedroom. I could have guessed. <laughs> my god, sooner or later more bombs will land here. Then everything will come to an end. Damn, the power is out. It's impossible to develop that roll of film now. At least now I finally have the keys to my old room. But why was it locked in the first place? Finally, I can enter my room. It's like being a child all over again. I used to play with the puppets by reenacting what was happening in my life. To clear my mind, I want to do it again. At the beginning of any puppet act, there was always the legend of the White Lady. Otherwise, the scenes I was reenacting were worthless. According to an ancient legend, the lakes of the area are haunted by the spirit of a young woman who was killed by the man she loved. A lover's nightly tryst by the lake. So much hope and desire. But death, not love, was awaiting her. Ah, oh, what a beautiful moon tonight! My 
My love is not here yet. I'll wait. You're here at last. What's going on? Why are you acting weird? You cheated on me! I would never do that! I love you! I love you too much! The thought of you with another drives me insane! That's why you have to die! What did I do to you? In despair, the man confessed he had killed her out of jealousy. They searched everywhere, but the girl's body was never found. Since then, her spirit, known as the White Lady, takes the life of a young woman whenever events take her back to that sad day. <laughs> Now I can begin. First of all, let's clarify what happened the night before the cursed 16th of July. Dad says we're losing. What will happen if we do? Will we go to Germany? Did you see Lapo yesterday? I saw him leave the barn. Weren't you there? Do you want 
to come with me to the lake tomorrow? I want to take some photos. Let's go at dawn. Mummy sleeps heavily anyway. You know she's been taking that medicine. Wake me up! Sure, great idea. Yes, it happened like this. Then in the morning, Martha went to the lake pretending to be me to show her pregnancy. She knew Mother was going to follow her down. Now I can only guess what happened when they met at the lake. Hello, Mummy. Take off your clothes. I want to see your shame. Pregnant. Your sister was right. What do you want from me? How dare you talk to me like that? Well, at least I had fun. I'll punish you for this, poor. Try, I dare you. This might be exactly what happened. I will never know exactly what happened, but I think I have an idea. And after everything, I shot my mother. No, 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 I didn't shoot. What actually happened? It is all in my mind, but I can remember. I know I can.
a little arm. A small leg. And another little arm. Another small leg. Oh look, only the head is left. I was under the bridge, but, but it was just a game. This, however, is not a game. I was just playing. It's just a bad joke. Under the bridge, the church, the town, speak, the white lady. is back. Now I can develop the role and hopefully have my questions answered.
Oh dear God, so it's true. I killed my sister. I did everything to hide the truth. Then I killed my mother to rid myself of the guilt. But she was nasty and everything was her fault. God, what does that make me? I don't deserve to live a second longer. Maybe I will see her again and I can try and ask for her forgiveness. But if there is nothing after death, at least I will be free from this suffering. I know it's not right, but I can't do this anymore. It was not easy to pull that trigger, but I did. Once again, though, I was not dead. They all died in the blink of an eye, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. But for me, it seemed impossible. When I fired, I unintentionally moved the weapon enough that the bullet deviated and hit my eyebrow. I was bleeding and there was a great pain above my eye. The voices grew distant, but nothing more. I fainted and then regained consciousness not long after. I woke up tied to a seat so tightly that I couldn't feel my hands or feet. On the seat next to me was my father. He was breathing, but he appeared to be unconscious. The guy in charge started asking me questions. He kept hitting me in the face and head with some kind of short cane. It was so violent I thought my skull would crack open. All I could taste in my mouth was blood and broken teeth. I ran my tongue across my teeth, thinking to myself that I'd never be able to smile again. A frivolous thought, perhaps, but a painful one nonetheless. Part of my top lip was cut open and was hanging down. I foolishly tried to put it back in place using my tongue and lower lip. I threw up. They forced me to confess that my father had been carrying out all kinds of activity within the German army. Of course, I didn't know anything about it, so I tried to explain those punches. I would have done whatever it took to stop them. Whatever it took. Just after I told them what they wanted to hear, the general said, all it took were two slaps and you sold out your father, you German whore. Then he ordered my father to be executed. It took less than a moment. He didn't even move. Then I took a blow harder than the previous ones, and I lost consciousness again. I woke up again on the ground, untied and completely empty inside. All I could feel was pain. Everyone was dead. I was now alone in the world. I felt a desire to hear their voices one last time on Daddy's recorder in the dark room. Provided the soldiers hadn't destroyed it, that is. she will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing with your father's gun? It's dangerous. Stop it. Talk. Tell me everything now. Tell me what you have done. Okay, okay. Calm down. I will tell you everything. I found that strange note when I woke up, and I immediately realized that something was wrong. Something was up with you, aside from your usual quirks. I came to check, but you weren't in your bedroom. You had spoken about the lake, and I got worried, so I called your father, and we went to see what was going on. We found you sitting in your underwear at the side of the lake. You kept saying that nothing had happened, and you kept repeating things like that. I hugged you to try and make you feel better, but you did not speak again for days. What is happening to you? You should tell me what's going on. I'm not going to that loony bin. I would never have wanted this, but 
I'm afraid you will harm yourself further. You were really hurting yourself in front of the piano that night. What else could we do? You killed my sister and now you're afraid because I found out. So you're making up stories, aren't you? But I'm not falling for it this time. What are you saying? Your sister. Please, no. I was not well. I didn't know what I was saying. So many years have passed. You were little then. I thought everyone had forgotten that nonsense. Shut up. Don't speak. Don't say anything else. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. I didn't know who I was anymore. Everything had fallen apart. I was afraid of myself. My God, it was terrible. I had always been convinced that I was too good for myself, but then I had become my own enemy. I was the danger. What should I have done? I thought about the puppet theatre in my old room. There I could find something in myself, perhaps. So I rushed to go play with it again. Mummy nearly died giving birth to me. This is what remains in my memory of my mother's, nanny's and father's stories. I remember little to nothing of my childhood at home. I have to try though. Maybe the important events I should know are right there. How are you, madam? I feel a sharp pain. Do you need anything? I can feel it. The time has come. Everything is ready. Help! Something is wrong! Edith, help! Irene is not well. How are you, honey? I'm getting weaker and weaker. Doctor, hurry! Arena is sick! Don't worry, Irene. The pain you feel is natural. 
Push, Rene, push. The baby is born. I feel sick. I feel myself wasting away. It's going to be okay. Poor mummy. She has suffered so much. I have hurt her so much ever since I was born. <laughs> Mommy, I'm hungry. No, it's not meal time, you little nuisance. Mummy, I'm thirsty. You just had a drink, whiner. Mummy, I have to pee. And what can I do about that? Mummy, I'm sleepy. That's enough! Go to your room! <sighs> Get out of my sight! I can stand you no longer! you pay for that my hands are not enough you need to learn properly this time sorry it was an accident mummy please Dum. Dum. This is just a game. Is it only a game? I believe the white lady said that my lost memories would return in the place of my happy childhood. This is the only place I have ever been truly happy. Are these my memories then? Is this actually my life? <laughs> what are you doing, Martha? You could have got Martha a glass, you little know-it-all. But, but what? I didn't do it.
so you learn to answer. What are you doing? Are you crazy? It's all Martha's fault. I don't believe you. I saw that. You think you're so smart. to you. Come with me now. Sorry, Mummy. I'm so sorry. Come with me. I will put you in your place, girl. I won't do it anymore. I promise. Too late. These false tears won't help you. Stay still. You want to bark. Leave my dog alone. There's no point screaming, stupid girl. No, Mummy, please. You're in. Now I'll show you how insane I am. Help, Daddy, help! Screaming won't work. Your father is not here like usual. I said 
Red eats. I was beginning to remember, but I was so scared to remember too much, especially all at once. I didn't have time to guess exactly what happened. It was making me too upset. Pulling out those memories was like trying to pull out a tooth on your own. Almost impossible, and far too painful. The white lady told me that the church is a safe place and home to its children. Donatilio, my priest, I have to talk to him. I have to call him on the telephone. Until you're speaking, who is it? Father, help me. They're all dead. Daddy, Mummy, everyone. Julia, come to me immediately. Don't stay alone. It's dangerous. Come to town. You can stay here with me and we can talk about everything. Okay? Okay, Father. But first I want to play with my puppets for a while. Julia, don't be silly. Come to church right away.
I will return to you, Martha. Together we will sort out everything. Just you and I. Those boys, they had all been killed and it was my fault. They were my age and a few of them were our friends. It wasn't meant to go like that. They found out but daddy protected me of course. Whoever had anything to do with the partisans was shot without hesitation. Suspicion alone was enough. I betrayed my father but what was I supposed to do? Should I have betrayed Lapo instead? He was my friend, and I loved him. But I also loved my father. Which side was I on? I just listened to my heart. I thought it was the right thing, but instead it was the worst thing I could have done. I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers, Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone for any reason. I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers, Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone for any reason. Once I crossed that threshold, I completely lost touch with reality. Everyone around me had died while I survived everything.
I don't remember how things went. I just remember a big light and then photographs were being taken of me. There was a man dressed in white, a doctor I presume. He was asking me questions, but I didn't understand what he was actually asking me. He wrote something on a piece of paper and then two nurses led me away. I was in the mental asylum. Some women were talking to themselves, others cried. Some were even covered in their own filth. Others were violent and tried to hurt themselves any way possible. There was this one young woman who would pleasure herself all day long, incessantly, to the point where she would bleed. So they would tie her down to the bed screaming, cursing and talking gibberish for days on end. Once her wounds had healed and she was untied, she would just start again. That woman was me. They started to give me injections. What they gave me made my whole body shake. I broke my vertebrae and an ankle. I think it was called cardiozole or something like that. My body was like a fire that didn't want to be put out. When it appeared to be quenched, it would come back, even stronger than before. In the end, though, they won. I stopped screaming and masturbating. I stopped thinking. There was no longer any need for therapy. Something inside of me had died. But nevertheless, I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined. Don't go away. Talk to me about Martha, please. Martha is dead. I killed her to take possession of her life. I will never find peace for what I have done. I feared that would be the case. And what about Mummy? Mummy is dead. Nobody knows that better than I do, unfortunately. It's useless to try and deceive ourselves. Did I do what I think I've done? Yes, damn it. It really happened. I cut her into pieces and buried her under the bridge. God, all that blood. My God, I knew it. What about Daddy? The soldiers, did that really happen? It happened. He was shot right in front of me. Fear, pain, shame. I can't remove it. I cannot relive it either. Unfortunately, I knew that already. What about Nanny? Poor Nanny. She really had nothing to do with it. But she died in our villa due to the bombings. We saved ourselves for some time by taking refuge at her house. Privileges for being rich. 
Feelings don't count for much there. My poor nanny. I'm afraid to ask about Lapo. Lapo is dead. He was blown up by a landmine. He got into trouble and paid with his life. My dear friend. Poor boy. Just as I remembered, unfortunately. One last question. The pregnancy? Martha was pregnant. Her deformed baby died with her. Maybe she was in pain. That's enough now. All of these questions are pointless, aren't they? It's all inside of us. We just need to turn the mirror. Is it not all just the reflection of an unknowable existence? Nothing more than a puppet show. Ready for everything with open arms, even ready to kill. Legs always ready to run. The womb that conceived in sin. Lastly, the mind. To protect us, it has turned us into monsters. Either way, we cannot live like this. Can we? I'll take care of it. I don't need to worry. I'll try to sleep if I can. I've got this. On the 26th of July, San Casciano was bombed and the church was destroyed. But I was not there then. I was already in the asylum. Once again, stubbornly, I was not dead. The bombs hadn't killed me and I had also survived myself. The most absurd test and the hardest one. The war ended some time ago now both out there and inside of me. I was on the wrong side of the gate, but now I can turn the page. Life is opening its doors again, isn't it? If I hadn't been so lucky to survive myself, I would have thrown everything away. We think that danger is all around us, ready to attack. The most devious and misleading dangers are the ones that are inside of us. They grow without us realizing. They make us suffer, remain confused, and remove our self-respect. I would have wanted to ask for help, but I was alone. This is my story. 
Thank you for being here, for listening to me. Now I'm ready to leave. How long will it take to get home? <laughs>